Ajuri, um, there has been questions about the legitimacy of elections in Nigeria and Nigeria's burgeoning democracy. Talk to me about the legitimacy of elections in Nigeria, especially the recent one, the presidential one, which some people are disputing. Thank you very much, my dear friend. Let me start by saying that it is a symptom of the fact that we are a democracy in its infancy, that we have never had an election conducted in our nation uh, in which you did not have uh, opposition candidates suggesting or outright, uh, you know, expressing that uh, the election was flawed. We have never had a situation in which uh, frontline presidential uh, candidates who have lost elections have come out and said, I lost this election. Some of that has to do with the fact that they are playing to their political basis. Some of that has to do with the fact that uh, they feel that doing so would uh, empower uh, the incoming uh, president, uh, according to the election cycle in question. But what we have said, and we've been very consistent about this, is that if we do not get a grasp on the fact that democracies around the world are under attack, that there is a de-democratization uh, effort going on across the West African subregion. We have had uh, three coups within the last two years. Uh, these are very alarming, uh, you know, scenarios that all well-meaning Democrats, all lovers of freedom of expression and all lovers of uh, popular democracy, they should begin to speak out. And so what we're saying is that we know that here in the United States, uh, we've seen the impact of fake news on uh, the electoral process. We've seen the unwillingness of certain political actors to accept defeat. This was not necessarily a norm in American politics, but is now becoming a norm. We've seen this in Africa for a long time now. So what we are saying is that we want to see the international media and international election observers uh, come in and make their assessments on the basis of evidence-backed fact. And if that's done, we can acknowledge that there may be areas uh, where we can certainly improve. But the general notion that we are not reflecting the will of our people, when we saw the uh, President Mohamedou Buhari lose his state in the presidential election, when we saw the incoming president, uh, President-elect Asiwajibola Metunubu, lose his state, Lagos state, in the presidential election, uh, if we were rigging elections, these instances would not be, uh, you know, they would not have happened. So this is where we are. Uh, we have also seen a situation in which the same election cycle, where opposition candidates won senatorial seats, won House of Rep seats, won governorship elections, they're not contesting that. They're saying that those elections were free and fair. In fact, the, when they won the presidential election in Lagos and in uh, Katsina, uh, Buhari's Katsina state, they said that those were free and fair. But all of a sudden, in all the other states where they lost, they say it was rigged. This is the symptom of what I'm talking about when I say that we have not developed to the point in our democratic culture where opposition candidates, uh, losing presidential aspirants, can come out openly and acknowledge that the people of Nigeria simply did not choose them to be their next leader. But, and but that's where you, we what, are. What do you say to those who are saying that there appear to be an orchestrated move to massage some figures in specific areas during the election and that the issues and the measures the Electoral Commission or INEC implemented to ensure transparency and credibility of the elections were severely undermined with their refusal, so to speak, to upload the uh, polling results from each polling stations using the mechanism, the beavers, they said, to ensure transparency. How do you respond to so, such critics? This was a major uh, element of the misinformation campaign uh, that certain agents of the opposition campaigns uh, had uh, conducted across the multimedia around the world. Uh, this notion that, that because the IREF portal, which was essentially, it's a viewing portal that allows uh, Nigerians and observers to see the results coming in from the various polling units, it has not been well articulated 
that that portal is a viewing portal. It has nothing to do with the actual conduct of the election on the ground in which people are using the bimodal voter accreditation system, VIVAS. Essentially, and by the way, an innovation brought in by our party, the All Progressive Congress, under the leadership of President Mohamed Buhari, where we scan the faces of each, of each voter and take their fingerprint on, that bi on the VIVAS system to ensure that we cut out all these ghost votes over voting and all of the other uh, elements of corrupt electoral practice that has been cut out with the use of this technology. We brought this technology. Now, after the election is actually conducted on the ground, the results are signed off by the, uh, by the agents, the observing of the agents parties, of the political right. parties. They have to agree that this is the result from this polling unit before it's now sent up to the various coalition centers. The point here is that the argument that's being peddled in the international media, in some international media, is that because the IREF portal had a glitch merely because we had an instantaneous and sudden and massive demand on one website. We saw this with Obamacare a few years ago. When the Obamacare website went uh, a long-awaited website uh, launch date came, uh, the website was inaccessible to millions of Americans on the date of signing up. That was not because uh, Barack Obama and the U.S. government at that time wanted to uh, deny Americans health care. It was because there was a technological error, a glitch. We had the same thing happen. But what we are saying is that even with that glitch, it had no impact whatsoever on the actual conduct of the election. And I would liken it to somebody saying that because there was a problem with their television at home, and they could not watch the Super Bowl. They're now saying because their TV didn't work that the Super Bowl was not played in the stadium. We believe that that's a foolish argument. Well, let me ask you about the dispute and some of the evidence the opposition parties, the PDP and the Labour Party, claim they have uh, to challenge the outcome of the presidential election result particularly. They said all kinds of things, in in including uh, that uh, the cash crunch was part of the uh, system to rig the election and that INEC chairman uh, you know, and some of the officials uh, came up with figures that were totally different from, 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 from what was read. How do you address these concerns? Well, this is the beauty of our democracy and, and the beauty of our uh, constitutional democratic setup in Nigeria is that uh, we have a very clear set of legal mechanisms by which the opposition uh, you know, uh, candidates can go through the judicial process to make their case. Uh, we have seen several instances in our nation uh, in which governors have lost their seats, senators have lost their seats, many high-ranking officials have lost their seats because of electoral malpractice, because of the legal uh, and judicial uh, processes that have been, uh, you know, put in place for dissatisfied, uh, uh, you know, political combatants. So we are very much convinced that we have a system that is tried and tested. We have seen several high-ranking officials lose their offices as a result of these tribunals and court judgments. And we have no doubt that if there was any instance whatsoever of the All Progressives Congress or any other party uh, abusing uh, the electoral procedures and processes on Election Day, uh, that ultimately any wrongly, uh, you know, elected uh, candidate uh, or falsely elected candidate will lose his office. We believe in the process, and we believe that the opposition must too. Before we go, um, Ajuri, where do Nigerians go from here? In, in, you know, looking at how the elections went, the dispute before the court at the moment, where do Nigerians go from here? How do you create a system to ensure that they are satisfied with the outcome of elections in the future? Well, we're certainly enthused by the fact that already uh, we have seen all of the opposition candidates that are protesting the outcome of the election go to their respective uh, courts to challenge uh, the election. Uh, that is healthy. We embrace that as a ruling party. President Mohamedou Buhari embraces that. President-elect Bola Ahmed Tinubu embraces that. Uh, and we look forward to the conclusion of that process. But in the meantime, we recognize that the temperature in the country has gone up. And we also recognize that we have a responsibility as an incoming administration and as the governing uh, party in the country, the All Progressives Congress, uh, to bring the temperature down. And how we do that is by uniting all Nigerians, even those who supported the candidates who lost the election or the candidates who are contesting the election in court, that uh, there is a, a need, uh, an imminent need, uh, to build our country across sectors build schools, build hospitals, make sure that we have world-class road and rail and port, seaport and airport infrastructure, make sure that the millions of young people in our country have access to jobs, make sure that we can establish a consumer credit system to allow tens of millions of Nigerians who cannot afford their own homes and cars to finally be able to do so on an instrumental monthly payment basis. 
This is where we're going to galvanize national attention. And ultimately, we believe that the political process uh, through the judicial uh, processes that are going on will ultimately play themselves out. And Nigerians, being the law-abiding citizens that they are, uh, will certainly respect the outcome of the courts.